Okay, so the title is a lot, I know. 1080p is a resolution from 2006. How could it possibly be better than 8K? That's like 20 times the resolution. I thought of this video when I saw a hilarious Petapixel article about kids on TikTok discovering that real cameras shoot better photos than phones do. Oh really? Why did you think people bought these things? Just for show? The article only talks about photos, but it made me think about videos too. Despite what adverts for phone cameras have told us, resolution is only part of the story. Have you ever wondered why some video files are larger than others despite the same resolution and length? It's all about the bitrate. This is my S22 Ultra, and the 8K recording that it does appears to be limited to about 200 megabit per second. That's bit, not byte. That means roughly 1.5 gigabytes per minute. That sounds like a lot, and it is when your phone has no SD card slot for more storage. Samsung. Just kidding, I'm not done complaining about you, Smaznug. I have to correct myself. You used to be able to record 200 megabit video, but now it's limited to 80 megabit, thanks to an update in August. Excuse me, are you serious, Samsung? The 8K 24Hz video is now lower bitrate than the 4K 30Hz video. No wonder it looks like trash. Quote unquote real cameras will often shoot in formats like ProRes. If you don't know, ProRes is a video compression standard that is widely used in the professional world. Unlike H.264 or HEVC, ProRes stores each frame individually. No P or I frames. That's perfect for video editing because you often need perfect frame accuracy for cuts. And if the first frame of your next clip is a predicted P frame, it looks bad. I know, I put a lot of thought and effort into these videos that get 300 views, but that's what you get working in the film and TV industry. Newer iPhones actually have the ability to shoot ProRes. The 4K files they create can be up to 800 megabit per second, meaning about 6 gigabytes per minute, four times what Smaznug used to give you at 8K. That sounds great. I hope it's not expensive to buy more storage on your iPhone or Mac. Now I use a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera to shoot these videos. It also shoots ProRes, and at 4K maximum quality it generates files that are 2.1 gigabit per second. Do the maths, and that's 16 gigabytes per minute, giving me a maximum recording time on this 512 gigabyte SSD of 32 minutes. This is why my backup folder is a disaster. Making PC build videos takes a lot of footage, and I think Backblaze might be losing money on me. It is worth pointing out that the maximum 1080p 24fps bitrate the Blackmagic camera shoots is 500 megabit, so 3.8 gigabytes per minute. Still significantly more than even pre-nerf Samsung 8K. I know I've been juggling jargon and various video resolutions and bitrates in this video, but the simple answer is that higher bitrate is better, regardless of resolution. But that's not the only factor at play here. Now, to get back to the point, you really shouldn't listen to companies like Samsung when they tout big features like 8K recording. Because chances are, the footage they shoot won't be usable, like in my S22's case. It's way too zoomed in and has a horrible jelly-like look to it in motion. Not that you can tell in this locked-off tripod shot. If I take the phone and point it out the front of my car, you can see a severe jelly-like effect whenever I go over the slightest bump, or even sit idle. That's not what I meant when I said I wanted V8 rumble, thanks. This is the result of the phone using a rolling shutter. That means the sensor inside the camera records the image line by line, usually rolling down, hence rolling shutter. And at 8K, I expect it takes so long for the low power chip inside to record 4,320 lines of pixels that real life moves ahead and the result is this ugly, unusable image. Basically, every camera I can afford uses a rolling shutter. Here's footage of a Tiger Cat shot on my Nikon D500. The rolling shutter makes the props look all wobbly. A camera with a global shutter would eliminate this issue completely, but even the phone at 4K looks massively better. So I really do think it's a processing power issue, and therefore a higher bitrate isn't going to solve anything. In fact, higher bitrate would probably mean more processing power is required. So realistically, I bet 200 megabit per second at 24fps was the best Samsung's engineers could tease out of this setup. This is supported by the fact the highest bitrate option after the update is 4K 60 
at 145 megabit per second. It's quite telling that 4K30 is not only higher bitrate, but enjoys a greater amount of post-processing than 8K24. If I drive down the same road as in the 8K clip, you can see there's still some wobble when the road isn't stable, but it's vastly better. If I take freeze frames, 8K does have more detail, but does that matter if in motion the video looks like it might cause motion sickness? The stabilization on the 8K also behaves strangely. It was on a suction cup mount on the windscreen, screwed in tight. So why is the hood moving about so much? I'm thinking this might be due to the lower field of view effectively multiplying the wobble. As the owner of a giant TV and an enjoyer of extremely large video files, I really don't see how 8K is realistically going to improve the experience all that much. This is the largest TV I can practically keep in my house. It's 93 pounds and it's so large I can barely move it around on my own. I watch raw 4K disc rips from it 90 inches away, which is the recommended distance for a 75 inch TV. And well, I can't see the pixels. According to ratings, I would need to sit about 50 inches from this TV to see the difference, assuming I had perfect vision. And at that distance, it becomes completely overwhelming. The blemishes I see from a proper viewing distance aren't related to resolution, but bitrate. Color banding or blocking from compression, especially in dark scenes, is incredibly ugly and distracting. This kind of artifact is why regular old 1080p Blu-rays still look great even on a big TV. Even super early ones. Am I crazy, or does everyone on the planet own a copy of Stealth on Blu-ray? I'm a plane spotter, and even I don't think this movie is any good. It's clogged up bargain bins for years. So what am I actually getting at here? Maybe just stay skeptical about manufacturer claims, especially when they randomly remove options and settings. Samsung! Numbers on a spec sheet are one thing, but real life is a lot more complex, and reality is often disappointing. If you go to a big box retailer, you can apparently see movie trailers played at 8K. At my local Best Buy, they had an 8K and a 4K TV playing the same content side by side. And not only could I not tell the difference, but I think the 4K TV actually looked better. It was brighter and had more contrast. But of course, without access to the files being played, I can't properly evaluate them. I don't know if they were 8K or 4K. And I couldn't tell by looking closely. Far closer than you should ever have your TV. Bewildering the poor salesman. Prime Video was the sponsor, and Amazon certainly doesn't stream content at 8K. Prime Video shows generally don't even get home releases. The PS5 might have an 8K logo on the box, but that doesn't mean you can go out and buy a movie at 7680 by 4320. How large would those files even be? 4K movies on disc often touch 70 gigabytes. So multiply that by four. Yes, four. Remember, when you double an object's length, the surface area quadruples. Technically, there has been a standard established by the Blu-ray Disc Association of 100 megabit per second on 100 or 128 gigabyte discs. But honestly, I doubt that will ever happen. The aforementioned Best Buy says they're not even going to stock physical media next year. Man, that sucks. Ironically enough, one of the very few places you can actually get 8K content is right here on YouTube which has somehow offered 8K uploads since 2015. Right now, the only content you can feasibly watch is stock footage and time lapses. And as much as I like seeing an extremely high-res Blue Jay, I'm not sure this would justify my purchase of a multi-thousand dollar TV. Thank goodness it comes with a month of Game Pass. I wouldn't have been able to afford this $6,000 otherwise. It's worth mentioning that there is somehow a TV station in Japan that broadcasts in 8K. So if you're somehow in the 0.5% of my audience who lives there, Please leave a comment saying if you've watched an 8K broadcast and did you notice a difference compared to 4K. TVs have never been as cheap as they are right now. If you're looking at a new one, I would focus on brightness, contrast, and color. And if you want to play some games, refresh rate and input latency. Check out my video on how a higher refresh rate can make you better at your games. I've been using Artings, or is it Ratings, as a resource for years at this point. They have an excellent way of scoring TVs for different purposes, as well as doing all sorts of insane long-term testing. Check them out, and don't fall for the 8K hype. I'll see you next time.